everybody, it's Christy back with another video and we are going to do another installment in the metallic watercolor series. So today we are going to look at the Art Whale 24 half pan watercolor palette. This was recommended to me by some people that wanted an affordable option to the Paul Rubens palette. So let's see how it stands up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's go ahead and take a look at these glitter watercolors. This is from Art Whale, 24 colors. We have half pans here. And this was recommended to me by somebody that suggested that they are very similar to the Paul Rubens 24 half pan set. So they do come in this really nice box with a nice chamois, much like the Paul Rubens ones do. We've got a really pretty teal tin, which is just awesome. I love that color. It's very similar to the color of the Meliang. Pretty excellent watercolor set, although that one is a little bit more powder blue, I think. It's not quite the same. So let's go ahead and open these up and see what they look like on the inside. Oh, so they're all nice and wrapped up. There is a really nice booklet here that we can swatch in. So I will have to do that maybe off camera. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the colors that we have. So what I will do for this set, unlike most of the other metallic watercolor series sets, is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to do my normal testing, but I am going to compare these pretty shot for shot to the Paul Rubens set because the price tag on these is about half of what the Paul Rubens price tag is. So I want to see if they are of the same quality and whatnot. So that will be part of this deep dive because that is something that was asked for. So we're going to go ahead and start the swatching process and we will be back shortly to talk about this 24 half pan set of watercolors.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to this deep dive. So this deep dive is going to go a little bit more in depth than the rest of the ones I've done for the metallic watercolor series, mainly because I was asked to compare these to the Paul Rubin set specifically. Holy, holy moly, guys. I just want to point out right away that this set really blew me out of the water. I was not expecting this set to test this well. I don't know why. I just didn't think that we could have such quality paints for this price. So let's get to it. Let's talk about it and talk about why you may or may not want to buy this set. So first of all, let's look at our normal swatching and testing. So look at this black swatch. Absolutely beautiful. We've got some sheen going on here. There's some, especially, especially in the greens, we've got some serious gold mica in the black. But if you look at these paints on white, they are incredible on white paper. They might be, other than Yuli, um, the best white paper brand that we've seen. Look how nicely the paints flowed. They actually got a pretty good score on flow. And overall, look at my little jellyfish. They turned out really good. You can see the different colors. You don't just see mica powder. And you can definitely layer with them, but also kind of blend with them. So they really passed all of these tests with flying colors. Let's take a second and deep dive these compared to the Paul Rubens because they're not exactly the same. I will come back to the testing sheet in a hot minute. Here is how they swatched on the big swatch, just so that you can see on the white paper here how they swatched. I think they were beautiful and swatched very similarly to my more high quality watercolor paper. So just to say that out loud, but let's get the Paul Rubin set out and do our deep dive here. So here's our Paul Rubin set. Um, and as you can see, both sets are a little bit wet because I was just messing around with both of them. So we don't have an exact color match. There are some colors that are here that aren't here. There are some colors that are very similar but are a little bit different. So I went ahead and I swatched on black just because I thought on black I would get the uh, best test. And I swatched them in the order that they are in the Art Whale well palette, not in the Paul Rubens palette. So I'm going to kind of nestle these swatches here and go through each of them. So as you can see, these ones are pretty much identical. This next pan is very different. The pearlescent sheen in the Paul Rubens is a gold. The pearlescent sheen in the Art Whale well is more of a pink or purple. The golds are pretty similar. These next three, well, I did one, two, and this one here. Um, these golds are pretty similar, although you've got a glittery one in your Paul Rubens palette, and you do not, you kind of just have three pearlescent colors in the Art Wheel palette. So there are more, there are glitter pans in the Paul Rubens set. There's three of them one, two, three. There are no glitter pans in the Art Wheel set. So that is one definite difference. I like this orange better than this orange. And you can see why if you look at the swatch, that orange is very similar to that gold. This one is a very different color. So I like it better. In terms of the pinks, I think they were pretty similar. Not a ton of differences, except you've got a glitter pan here and you've got a pearl pan here. So you can just kind of decide which of those things you would like better. That's up to you. Here we have three purples in this set, one, two, three. And here we have these two purples and then this pan down here that I measured up here against this pan because that was about the closest I could get. They are very different. I actually think this pan matches up better to this Paul Rubens pan if you look at them. And then you've kind of got this guy here that's very different, but I actually really like it. I like that one in the art wheel better. And then these are pretty identical. So, so far, Art Will is scoring some points. Paul Rubens is going to score some points on the other side of the pan. So we've got these three paints here, which are very similar to these three paints. This one is very similar to this one. Then you've got these two, which are pretty identical. And then you're like more ultramarine blue, which are pretty identical. This is pretty identical, but the greens in the Paul Rubens set are superior. Let me show you here. So you've got... There, we can see it a little better. These are all green paints, these three. 
and these ones look straight up gold. This has that gold green thing going on. This one kind of has it as well, but this green down here is a really nice color. It's really hard if I don't move my hand there to see it. This green is a superior green to having this and this in the set. They both, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it, have kind of a green gold effect, but when you put them on black, they both look very mica powder-esque. Now, on white paper, let's explore each one of those on white paper for a second. Your three greens on white paper here for the Art Whale set still look very gold. You don't get a ton of the green. For the Paul Rubens set, those three greens are looking very different. So you still have a green gold, but you have this really nice like hunter, sappy green, and then this lighter green. So I think the greens in the Paul Rubens are nicer. But it's one, I mean, that's just two paint pans, you know, so it's not that big of a difference. It just depends on what you want. You could also mix either of these sets to have the colors that you want. Then here we've got this brown, which is over here in this palette, but they're pretty identical. This red, which is over here in the Paul Rubens, and again, pretty identical. You can see that the Paul Rubens seem to have a little bit more shine. These ones over here are a little bit more matte, um, but it, it's real negligible. Then the brown and the black in this set are more pigmented, actually. These guys are more pearlescent. It just depends on what you want. I tend to like the Artwell ones a little bit better than the Paul Rubens ones, but then this Paul Rubens black really shows up as a nice metallic silver, and that's kind of a nice value add. This doesn't really have a nice metallic silver per se. So those are the differences between these two palettes. I am surprised that I really liked the Artwell palette as much as I did, because obviously you can see right now how much I love this palette. I use it all the time. It's a very popular palette for me, but this one has some really nice colors, and it actually has some things this one doesn't have, and it plays very similarly. So what are the major differences between the two other than those colors? The other major difference here is price. Paul Rubens comes at a much higher price tag than the Artwell palette, but Paul Rubens provides pigment information on their website. I could not find pigment information for the Artwell palette. So take with that what you will. If you care about knowing the pigments, it is mica paint. A lot of these paints are not going to be light fast anyhow. So I don't know if that's really something that you need to have. But if it's something that you want to know, if you feel more comfortable knowing where your paints come from, then you might want to pay the extra money for the Paul Rubens palette. So let's talk about how this tested out. I'm gonna try to set these maybe like right here and we'll go through. So there are 48 colors to my knowledge in this set. There's a 24 pan, that's what I bought. And then there's a 48 set. The 24 pan runs for $26 roughly on Amazon. You know, prices fluctuate. Um, and then the 48 set runs for about 46 bucks on Amazon. So you can almost get double the paint here that you could for Paul Rubens. Uh, let me see if I have the pricing for Paul Rubens right here. I do. So $50 for their 24 pan set. And this, you can actually double it, right? So for $46, you can get 48 pans there. So this is 88 for their 48 set. So this is more expensive than your Art Whale paints, for sure. Um, it does come in a separate palette. Again, there's no pigment information. I think these ones perform a little better on white paper. The Paul Rubens perform better on the black paper. So that also might matter if you are considering buying both or one of the sets, if you want something. I mean, they're not bad though on the black paper. Like, look at that. They're really not bad. And I think they hold up as well as many of the other brands that we have tested. They're very available on Amazon in the United States. That's all I can speak to. Uh, if somebody from other places in the world would like to tell me in the comments below if these are available to you. That would be great for all of us on the channel to know all over the world. So I just said what? I was shocked. There's one to two colors in here that do do a color shift, no holographic, no spe other specialty, which is about the same as the Paul Rubens. I was just saying that the only thing other than the no pigment information, they don't have a set of 12. I do think that it would be, I couldn't find a set of 12. Don't quote me on that. I'll look again. And if that's changed, I will insert it in the video right here. 
But assuming they don't have a set of 12, that would be the only way that these could be better because I still feel like $26 could be a little bit of a high price tag for somebody if they would prefer less paints for more money. So like the Psy art brand on Amazon is cheaper than this and they have those, you know, six pan palettes or 12 pan palettes for somebody who wants something more affordable. Even a Yuli Dot card would be more affordable if you're looking for something that is more budget friendly. So I, that's just one thing I'm nitpicking really. All right, so let's talk about final score here. So for Shine, we had a five out of five, no question. I gave it a four out of five for versatility because like I said, I think it didn't swatch quite as well on the black paper and we didn't have that 12 set. The Paul Rubens has a 12 set. Lots of other similar brands have a smaller set. Color variety, five out of five. And this is only the half of what they have. I think that their colors were really, really good. And they had a lot of things that Paul Rubens didn't have. So I really liked it. Flow, four out of five. Great flow. Um, I was impressed. Price, four out of five. Again, I think that they are better than the Paul Rubens, but they are not what I would consider a super budget friendly brand. I think they are really well priced though. Um, definitely really good. And so pigmentation, five out of five, that gives them a total score of 27 out of 30. Like I said here, if they had that 12 color set, we could have given them a five out of five here and they would be tied for best overall. But I think this is an amazing score for this set of paints. So if you are comparing these and the Paul Rubens and price is your number one factor, get these. That's what I would say. If you are going to compare these and the Paul Rubens in terms of, I want to work on white paper, I would get these. Um, I just think that these are such a good bang for your buck. Thank you. I will look up the user and I will tag you in the comment to tell everybody thank you because uh, there was a community comment that said they wanted to see these. So that's why I bought them. So I am really glad that I reviewed these because I think that they turned out to be pretty awesome overall. All right, this was a really long end of this video, but what did you guys think? Uh, do you think that I judge these fairly? What else would you have said about these two paint sets or can you add more to this discussion in the comments below? And that's gonna be it for me today. I hope that this inspires you to paint something sparkly today and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.